Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate in Final Fantasy podcast. I am your host, Caleb. I am Jim. And this week, we are going to be finishing up our... This is our third part, I believe, in Final Fantasy XIII Episode Zero, where we read... Well, we review, I guess, chapters or parts five, six, and seven. So the last three chapters in this audio book, um, as far as the format we're reading it, brought to us by the Scott Spot on YouTube. Read a uh, translated version of the copy and put it to li- brought it to life for us. So translated version of the copy coming from the Dilly Shilly or Shilly Dow. I don't know. I'm sure the link is in the description of at least the previous episodes. So, there's a blog on there. They're great. They did the translation for it. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, uh, yeah. I'm excited to get into Hope, Snow, and Sarah. And then Fang and Villanelle for a fourth time. (laughs) Uh, Once again. Yeah. uh, Bringing it back home. Um, And we'll talk about that Final Fantasy Episode Zero. I'm going to apologize today for the audio quality. Actually, I'm not going to apologize. Fuck you. Have fun with this audio quality. Yeah, suck it uh, up, right? It's not my fault, and uh, everybody can go fuck themselves. Nothing here is my fault, and yeah. I'm. Uh, this is oh my god, I'm ready to murder some people. At what percent victim are you now <laughs> over there? You know, hundred percent victim right now. Hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent victim right now. Fucking holy shit! There is, uh, yeah. I'd say, uh, yeah. I'm you, a, a, twice, would you say I'm a victim right now? Um, I mean, I told you to never go to that shithole, but huh. yeah, you're a victim. Okay. Who could have known other than everyone around you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, do you want to talk about it, or is it still too fresh? I want to murder. Every time I think about it, I get angry. When I'm not thinking about it, I can, like, have a normal day. But currently, it's affecting me right now, and I have to do this fucking episode over the phone, uh, which is driving me fucking nuts. Yeah, uh, it does I, not sound as good. That's for sure. No, it doesn't sound as good. And also, I'm holding up my phone, and uh, frankly, my elbow already wants to fall off, and it's not even an hour in. So Yeah. Yeah, not even close to an hour in. We're not even 10 minutes. So, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Everybody have a happy new year. Yeah. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Um, I will be stewing in my own uh, anger and hatred for all humankind. Um, but, yeah, before we get into any of that, though. <laughs> yeah. Where are you in uh, Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo's Cunchin? I mean, Dungeon. Uh, I am at the beginning of Chapter 3. I think I've maybe done one story chapter in Chapter or story dungeon in this chapter, and I'm on. I, I was supposed to like bring vegetables or something to this girl, and then I did it, and then she forgot what she was doing. And of course, I then had to do her dungeon. The game's set up really weirdly. Like people forget their yeah, to do her dungeon, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I I know my way around her dungeon. I mean, actually, I don't because it's kicking my ass. <laughs> yeah, it changes every time. I swear to God. It, yeah, yeah. No kidding. It's like this is new. You know, <laughs> one of these uh, one of these meat one of these fucking meat curtains get here get here. I don't remember this last time, but uh, no. What? But, uh, the... Are we talking about the same game? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> But it's 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 a very difficult game, and it gets very difficult pretty quickly. Like, I had a hard time with the end boss, I suppose, of Chapter Two, which was the Phoenix Dungeon. It's like a fifty, no, it's a twenty floor dungeon, and you get a little break on floor ten where you can kind of teleport back up to floor ten. And the biggest problem I was running into there was I wanted to keep exploring to find better items because the game has like a crafting system, and you're supposed to collect items and craft them, fuse them together, make them more powerful versions of themselves, so on and so forth. But the problem I would run into is I would just die. And when you die, you lose everything on you. And it's not just you lose everything that you 
picked up in this dungeon. If you knew this was a hard dungeon and you took three potions and three Gasol greens with you and you die, those are gone. You lose it all. Yep. yep. Uh, so it's brutal and very unforgiving. I mean, the only thing you get to keep at the end of those is your experience. So you can level your Chocobo up by continually failing a dungeon and then just gaining job points to level up their jobs and then of course overall experience yeah. points to level up your chocobo itself um, they kind of have separate stats and shit like that but it's uh it's getting real hard like real fast this game is not fucking easy so i'm i'm at the very beginning of chapter 3 and it's already getting brutal as fuck like i've got these shadow crab dudes and these other shadowy creatures that are just dealing massive damage and i just don't have i just don't have the uh attack to really kill them so i'm trying to use a black mage to kind of melt them and it seems like i'm doing more damage that way but the main problem is it's not enough and then suddenly i'll walk into a room and i'll just be surrounded by dudes and then they'll just one of them will cast slow on me and then they'll all just take a turn and then they'll take another turn, and then I'm dead. So it's it's getting pretty hard. And I know today we were supposed to review this game, but neither of us have beaten it. I was disheartened because I was getting my ass kicked earlier in the week, and then Joe was like, yeah, I'm not going to beat this fucking game by the time we <laughs> record this week. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to try then because I'm, like, getting pissed at this game. Like, I'm getting so mad. <laughs> I uh, I believe I sent an audio recording into our secret little geekdom chat group at Facebook, and uh, believe I let everybody know that I was as frustrated playing this choke of fuck game as I was playing Bloodborne. Uh, just about the same amount of frustration. It's not that the game is worse than Bloodborne, and it's not that it's as hard as Bloodborne. Sorry, excuse me. Let me rephrase that. It is because it is it is first a very difficult game, but also a worse game than Bloodborne. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I think uh, when my anxiety slash um, whatever the chemicals are that like go up in you when you're ready to like murder people, um, whatever that chemical is, it's it's pumping about the same amount. You know, uh, my hatred towards this Chocobo Dungeon game, it can't really grow any anymore. I have played, according to my game time, I've only played like eight and a half hours, which is bullshit. Um, I've played many hours of this game, and I have hardly gotten further than where I was when we recorded last week. So last week, I believe I was stuck in the last dungeon of uh, Chapter 2. And this week, I've gotten to the last 10 levels of a 30-level dungeon of Chapter 3, which is the last dungeon in Chapter 3. So at this rate, twice, we should be beating this game in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, an incredibly frustrating game. Uh, most of my time has been spent um, deciding whether or not I'm going to straight up continue on without my items up, or if I'm going to do a, a hard restart uh, <laughs> just because I want my fucking potions back. Um, so that was that. Also, yesterday I was like, I was freaking the fuck out because someone said, hey, talk to the guy in the church and you'll get your jobs. And then you were like, oh, you just switch your jobs by standing in front of the crystal, yada, yada. So today I was like, okay, I'm going to the guy in the church, and all he's doing is taking the curf curse off my items. And nothing fucking happens when I go in front of the crystal. Here's the deal, though. There is a bonus. Not really a bonus. I wish there was a fucking red check mark on this motherfucker. Uh, apparently, you got to do the bonus dungeon given to you by the... Uh, by the guy at the church, in order to unlock the ability to have cops. Oh, that was a bonus dungeon? That's a bonus dungeon. Oh, that, that, that should not be a bonus dungeon. That should be a, hey, go do this, because you're not going to beat the game unless you do this. 
dungeon. No, and you know how much... Oh my god, dude, I was like a level 25... <laughs> normal ass motherfucker <laughs> level 25 damn i leveled up so fucking much dude oh my god and oh. then i i got that fucking i did that tiny little dungeon with that guy i went back up to that thing switched to the knight class because he had the highest attack and defense and then i fucking like plowed 20 yeah. floors oh yeah like, I was so, like, I was relieved while at the same time being more mad at the game for making that, like, a bonus dungeon. And how come that little annoying little piece of fuck didn't be like, hey, I'm Rumpelstiltskin. Um, hey, do you want to learn how to do this? How come he didn't be like, hey, do you want to switch jobs? You better go talk to the guy in the church and do the bonus level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. I, man. See, I did it, and then you were like, how do I change jobs? And I'm like, dude, it's just the crystal thing, like he tells you. But I didn't it's I didn't a, realize... Crystal and it'd make job. Is that yeah. what you're telling? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And I was I didn't realize that was an optional quest that I had, that I had started, because it said, like, hey, go to the church to get jobs, or to unlock jobs. And I was like, okay. And then I went to the church, because I knew where it was, and then I did it. I didn't realize that it, there was another mission checkmarked on the map, which there must have been, because the game is like, hey, go here. There's a big, big red checkmark. That's where you go, and that's how the game is. That's how you navigate this game, uh, by bo- by following the big red check marks blindly and not paying attention to what people are saying, apparently. And Yeah. Yeah, that's so I was... Could- yeah, that's how <laughs> that's how the Joe would play it. But I was like, yeah, dude, you just go up to the big crystal and you get to choose the three jobs. Like, I don't understand what the problem is. The first time you do it, he tells you that, and it's like, it's pretty easy. But yeah, then you said it wasn't there, and I was like, what? It's like, oh, what do you what do you mean it's not there? Like, it's there. I I, I just checked. Like, mine mine's there. But yeah, optional quest for the guy in the church. And yeah. I guess that's how you unlock the ability to be a white mage. Not bloodborne difficult. Yeah. You have to talk to the one guy. So, yeah, it's a lot easier now. Because um, I figure I probably over leveled at this point. Um, still, I'm having difficulty on the last 10 floors of that 30 floor dungeon. So, maybe yeah. I just caught up where I'm supposed to be at. But... Maybe. Um, I think you're, you're definitely ahead of me. How many levels are you? Maybe. I think I'm on the first or second level in... No, uh, no, no. Uh, what's your Chocobo's overall level? Oh, overall level? Um, it might be close to 20. I don't know. Um, I've been leveling up the Black Mage a bunch the last little bit, but... Yeah, I can't quite remember what my overall level was instead of as opposed to my job level, but I think my Black... Or my uh, my knight class is, um, I think that's like level five or something or four. I don't know. But the one I'm, I'm really, made... I'm really ready not saving this game till later. Yeah. Like, well, it's not a Final Fantasy game. We just found that out when we did the first game, Chocobo game. And because uh, you know the title Final Fantasy, it wasn't on it in the Japanese release. Yeah. Um. So I'm like, fuck, could be playing Comrades right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't really want to play that either, to be honest. But <laughs> I I don't think it's going to be as hard as this one. But I did hear a few people complaining, saying that Comrades was uh, super, super grindy. So we may have uh, that to look forward to. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, why does everything, why does everything go like that? What? Why does everything have to be a grindy RPG? In this, in this... Everything happened at once, man. Oh, Fuck. Yeah. I've had the worst fucking week in a long time. It's just a fucking fuck of a week. And Chocobo Dungeon is the cherry on the motherfucking top. <laughs> yeah, the cherry on the, the top of the shit pie. <laughs> that you've been, <laughs> you've been being force-fed this whole week. Shit pile. Oh. oh, man. I mean, it was a great year, but fucking terrible last week. Um, So, yeah, that's where I am in that cunt fucker of a game. Is, uh, it's on the, uh, near the end of Chapter 3 of 5. Yeah, 
Yeah, so we'll we'll try to get it done as soon as we can, but you know. You'll live. We've got to uh we've got to do our best of stuff for the year as well. Uh yeah, we do. We do. Um, I think you're the best best for that. I mean, I haven't re listened to the Ultimas this year. Um I mean, I generally assume the reviews that I remember being really fun and really great are the best episodes, because I feel like that's almost always the best episodes of Ultima. But guys, um, we need your nominations for Best Non-UFF FF Podcast, and um, also Best Episode, Worst Episode, Best New Song. I mean, we'll, well, we'll do Best New Song and shit like that, but... We didn't even have a new song this year. We had a new song last year. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we haven't... The one hasn't come out so yet. We had, yeah, we had Vagrant Story, but that was it. Yeah. I guess that's a winner, you know? There you go. That one won this new song. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need uh, a speech. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, best episode, worst episode. And uh, uh, send us your stuff. Uh, you can do it on the forums, or you can tweet it to us. And I'd be interested in hearing that. That stuff, and I'll re-listen to my favorite episodes. And we'll we'll get together some nominations, which we'll have the vote on Twitter. Um, probably we'll do that the nominations next week, and then the week after we'll do the award ceremony. So, um, and it'll be our kind of our final one, though, right? The last full year of Ultima. Yeah, yeah, it'll be the last full year of our show. I mean, I mean, unless every game is fucking Chocobo Dungeon hard. Yeah. In which case, murder. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine that they are. Uh, by the way, the um, Four Heroes of Light. Oh no, never mind. I said I was gonna say that I am able to buy that through the Square Enix store, but the link, my like save my spot thing, expired, so I can't buy it now. But they do have that one. That's I think it's five bucks for me. I don't know if that's like a current sale or it's like when I hit, said, hey, I want to buy this game, but I can't right now, so they keep giving me the $5 mm-hmm. price. Or if it's actually 5 bucks. There's that one, and then also Explorers is, I believe it's 20 through their website. So that's a good time to pick up Final Fantasy Explorers for the 3DS because we'll be playing that soon enough. So see, uh, see what I can do. Going down my stairs. Okay, so I have Foot Tales, I have Final Fantasy Explorers, um, I have Kingdom Hearts Recoded. Oh, shoot. I'm going to need to get uh, Four Heroes or. The Four Heroes of Light? Yeah. Yeah. That's coming yeah. up, too. It's coming up. we got to mm-hmm. get on that. Yeah, just get on their website and sign up for the waiting list. A whole waiting list. Yeah, they don't have any copies available, apparently, so you got to get them to email you when it's your turn. It's really annoying, though, because their store right now is, like, being a real fucker because I'm trying to cash in on all my Square Enix rewards points for all of the uh, collector's editions, like the obscene amount of money I've spent through their goddamn site because they give you little points and stuff over time, right? And I have enough... To get a 3DS case for Final Fantasy Explorers, a music book for Explorers, like the soundtrack that came with the special edition, the and the soundtrack for Heaven's Word. But every time I try to check out, when I like click on the cart and I click check out, it goes to the checkout page for like half a second, freaks out, and then goes back to the main page. And I'm not able to buy anything. And like it's just an endless loop. And I... I Googled it, and I guess it's happening to a bunch of different people. And mm. there's. Did you contact customer support? You know, I tweeted him, but. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be enough. Um, I, a couple people on the thread I found on Reddit were like, hey, yeah, I contacted them. We'll see what they say. And then, like, three days later, they're like, yeah, they said it was fixed, but I can't do it still. So. <laughs> It's like they're just like, you can't have the rewards. They're ours. No. No. Yeah. Uh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, there's that. And then have you, did you hear the part in Nude Clan where Angry, or one of our listeners sent us copies of Final Fantasy 4 and 6 on the Famicom? 
No. Yeah, it's uh, our good friend, Angry Ass Black Dude. He uh, he sent us a copy of Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy IV on the Famicom, so the Super Nintendo over in Japan, and they're they're Japanese copies. Pretty good shape. Oh wow, yeah, that's yeah. pretty awesome. When you say us, do you mean me and you or Nude Clan? Uh, you and I. They were the UFF gifts. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, you. if you ever want to play the game and not understand what's going on, you know, that now you can. I do have that Retron. I think it can play the Famicom versions. I I would hope so. That's that's why I was like, oh, man, Joe could totally play these. That's pretty fucking sweet. Uh, good luck figuring out what the hell to do unless you remember the game. Um, I mean, yeah, you can remember it enough, right? It's the same thing, just with different text. Yeah, yeah, I would assume so. And 6, it would be cool to see 6 and, like, its original form on that Retron, because that Retron cleans shit up, so I bet you that would look pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean, FF Adventure looked as good as it could possibly could. <laughs> yeah. Frank, um, I wish I could show you, like, a side-by-side, but I saw it myself. It was amazing. Um, yeah, man. Oh, uh, fuck, man. Uh, we got some news. We got a little bit of news. Not much, but we got a little bit. And then we can talk about this FF13 thing. So you want to get into that? Yeah, let's uh, let's dive on in. Yeah, tell me when that jingle plays. Oh, I, I haven't played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's why I'm not. Uh, that's why I didn't say anything. No, you know what? You know, let's play it. Let's play it. All right, so what have you got for us in news today? Uh, three pieces of news, and we're doing this old school now. Uh, I looked up the news that Shinru put up on my phone, and then I wrote down notes on a piece of paper. Uh, and then we got three pieces of news. Well, there's four. Uh, one of which is like a Final Fantasy fourteen updates, and there's new cool things for the updates. Go check that stuff out if you're interested in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here we have the three biggest pieces of news, as far as I could tell. Um, there is a Brave Exvius Kingdom Hearts event going on. Oh, nice. So if you're playing Brave Exvius, like my roommate is, um, then yeah, go check out that Kingdom Hearts shit. Um, and then, of course, everybody, Final Fantasy Fables Chocobos Dungeon every buddy uh, apparently we'll have a two player mode so can't wait mm, can't wait did we decide if that was a sequel or a remake um i looked online and it seemed to be more of a remake than anything like it's okay so i'm going to go to the everybody page that square enix has out right now um Everybody. Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, Everybody. Or is the, the guy in the the trailer, Everybody! Super stoked on it. So, here's what it says. Introducing the latest game in the Chocobo's Dungeon series. And an RPG you can play countless times. Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, Everybody. 2007's Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo's Dungeon is back and better than ever with a whole new gameplay system. Uh, it's a remake. Fuck Square right now. Jesus. I know. <laughs> I know. The rules of the Mystery Dungeon are simple. The world only moves whenever Chocobo moves, whether Chocobo walks, kicks, or uses an item. So if you find yourself surrounded by monsters, don't fret. You have all the time in the world to think of a plan. Uh, yeah, horseshit. Just take it one step at a time, because buddies with all the monsters... Oh, become buddies with all the monsters and play cooperatively with your friends. Every time you enter, the mysterious dungeon changes shape. Take one step forward and change the world. Yeah, so it is a remake of the game we're playing right now on PS4. I want it out. It doesn't have an official release date right now. It's Square. I, Fuck them. God it's, damn it. I think it's out in Japan. Or it will be soon. Um, yeah, it just says release this winter. 
I am sick of getting to their like shit pile games, and then them like announcing a remake right when we're playing that one. Yeah, it's happened multiple times now through this throughout hey, the the podcast. That's to this game. <laughs> it's too late for UFF. <laughs> yeah, like those guys said mean things about Final Fantasy VIII. We're gonna remake these <laughs> games after they play them. <laughs> Such a move. I swear to God, they're doing it on purpose. There's someone here at the California Square Enix. And they have it out for us, man. They have an in to like release schedules, and they're they're fucking around with it. They're putting like chess pieces down on how to destroy us. Yeah, yeah. They're sending people into certain places to steal certain items from from some of us yeah. to try to take the showdown. Systematic takedown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a war right, well, square. Enjoy Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon every buddy whenever that piece of fuck comes out. Uh I don't recommend it because I don't recommend the original. Uh oh whoops. Uh didn't say that. Um <laughs> And our last piece of news, uh, turns out you can have a Final Fantasy XIV themed wedding in real life, Schweiss, uh, because a wedding hall in Japan is making it an option. They are gonna they can make the Final Fantasy XIV themed wedding that you always wanted. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure you can fly up in the air and shit, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get your get your dragon mount to fly away. That's right. Uh, so yeah, that's all there is for news. Can't expect much. It's in that weird in between period between uh, Christmas and New Year's, so there ain't much going on yet. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. You got anything? Um, no, I haven't really heard anything else. Uh, it's just yeah, kind of a slower time. Um, I think, you know what, I, I, I know this is weird talking about another podcast, but I think Limit Break Radio might be done. What? Yeah, like I, I you know what, I'm going to check real quick, because I, I remember seeing something about like a few people saying farewell, um, and then I looked uh, at their site, and I noticed that it hasn't, it seems like the last thing they talked about was FanFest, and let me see. Let me check, let me check. Hold on, did we win? <laughs> uh, they had released episode 182 titled End of an Era on November 13th, and then November 27th they released 2018 Fan Fest Special. I'm confused. Did you Read the descriptions, man. This is... There's, I mean, like, when we put in a podcast, we gotta, we gotta write down, like, what the podcast is about. Well, it said, Limit Break Radio makes its triumphant and final return to Las Vegas to cover the FF14 Fan Fest at the Rio. Here are their reactions to Shadowbringers, the announcements of Blue Mage and New Game Plus, and much more. Joined by some Titans that share some new thoughts on the expansion, so on and so forth. But that was, uh, that was a month ago. So when I said last time, I, I remember thinking like, wow, did I... Did I did I say check out a dead show? And I think I did. Like I think they're they're done with this, which just seems did so, we kill them? so weird. Yeah, I mean, maybe no. I I don't think we. They did. were the biggest show, Schweiss. Well, Schweiss. Maybe Kingdom. maybe Square Enix killed them too somehow. Oh shit. Like fan fest, they just destroyed them or something. Like they, it's not that they didn't want to record after that. It's just that they can't now. <laughs> They're just not allowed to. <laughs> well, I'd lock your doors twice. They're yeah. coming after. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, it's 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 a takedown, man. They're starting at the top, so I mean, we don't have much much longer. <laughs> Just need to see some of our allies, quote unquote, in in the UK go dark, and then we'll know we're next. Oh fuck! Um, <laughs> well, what are the other big pot? We're what are we like third place behind you? Um, in iTunes, I know we're third place. Yeah, there are a couple. Because Limit Break Radio is bigger than us. 
but we're bigger than the other shows. Uh, on Android, on Podcast Addicts, we are the biggest podcast, the biggest podcast. Yeah, so I guess now, I mean, She Heals, I Tank, I believe, is one that's still going. Um, I mean, we have the No One Can Know About This show, but that's that's totally different. Um, they don't quite have the same as Limit yeah, Break. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. Or as us. Uh, I hear they've got a really fun setup, though, but um, I, I don't listen to other shows, oh. so. <laughs> well, I, I get enough Final Fantasy out of this show. I think yeah. It's really what it is. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's not really like a, I mean, I get, I can get other listeners of ours hitting up other shows because they might not get enough, but we feel like, I feel like I certainly do. Um, Yeah. And I don't want, you know, the big, the red scare, you know, I don't want someone else's show just influencing ours other than the ones we totally ripped off in the beginning and have, uh, have... I've outdone for years now because they don't fucking put episodes out ever, as far as I can tell, ever. Um, one, once Discovery every G podcast, by the way. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, I like them actually. I, th- I think they're pretty damn funny. <laughs> they just don't yeah, they uh... put out anything forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Wow, if Union's over, I gotta fi- I gotta double check. I want to see if Union's over because if Union's over, that means hey. I can start calling us the biggest Final Fantasy podcast. Not the biggest Final Fantasy 14 podcast. <laughs> um, no, they're not. They they put one out in December, December 11th. Don't scare me. Come on, man. This whole conversation was based upon whether or not they were dead. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts Union yeah. is still there, too. I mean, that's fine, but... I don't understand how you can have a show about Kingdom Hearts, like... Is there really that much in there? I mean, there's only like six or seven games. I mean, that'd be like me being like Metal Gear Solid, the weekly Metal Gear Solid podcast. Where well, we they do out, like, Well, we run out of content in about a year, you know, if that. And that's if we're playing the games slowly. It would be a year's yeah. worth. Um, speaking of, I feel like now is the appropriate time to announce uh, Joe and I's next podcast, the... No, I'm just fucking with you. There's no new. There's no new podcast. Huh? Uh, yeah, I was like, I was thrown for a loop there for a second. I was like, wait. <laughs> You're like, no. Should I agree on this? No. <laughs> um. But uh, oh, yeah, God. it's. I so I mean, I guess check out She Heals I Tank. I don't know. We're gonna have to find another 14 podcast to, to like push off the 14 news onto. Be like, go listen to this because we don't care right now. He's like, we're not going to play this game until the expansion comes out, and everything in in between then literally means nothing to us. Like, nothing. If we talk about patch notes and, like, little, oh, you get this item and this item, like, all of that is gone. The second we read it, I don't remember it at all because I'm not playing the goddamn game. I think I was misunderstanding you for the last 15 minutes. Limit Break is done? Yeah, Limit Break, yeah. Limit Break? I thought you were... For some reason, maybe you said Limit Break and I was thinking Union. Oh, no, no. That's why I was, like, freaking out. Okay. Damn. I know. It's too bad, huh? You know, we, yeah. We thought we had lost mortal enemies, but really we lost brothers in arms. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're fine. Yeah, they're, 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 they're as strong as, I mean, as strong as they can be, I suppose. Uh, but uh, going to check out their last episode then, uh, End of an Era. That's really sad. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. There yeah. we go. Rest in peace, uh, Final Fantasy um, Limit Break Radio. <laughs> Sorry, not Final Fantasy Union. Limit Break Radio. Um, great show. Great host. Great to have on as guests. Um, frankly, a better show than ours, in my opinion, just show-wise. Um, well, they're definitely going to yeah. sound better after today's. Your mic, dude. It sounded fine in the beginning. You said it was fine. You said it was fine, so this is the way we were doing it. It, it ain't fine now. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? Huh? I don't do know. I, I, I don't do fucking... I turn to him like, right, one, two, three, now, and then, like, suddenly the audio becomes beautifully clear. Yeah. Maybe we should, actually. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing we should do. No, this is going to be a Skype call, and next week we'll go back to the Zoom bullshit. All right. Um, which is 
it is higher quality. It's just a pain to edit, which now it's in your shoes. So have fun with that. Um, yeah, rest in peace, Limit Break Radio. I kind of want to just give him the award because the lifetime yeah. achievement. Lifetime achievement. Yeah. Lifetime mother offer award. <laughs> First year, we might as well like give it to him the last year. Yeah, remember that? Um, yeah, I feel bad though because I've heard a lot of people love it on the uh, "No One Can Know About This Show." It's funny though because like I heard about what it was, and I guess the layout is they they play the games together, which is impossible for us now, but we did for a little while. And they they do commentary as they're playing the game, but then they do commentary on top of their commentary. Which is like a crazy idea for a show, but everyone fucking loves it. Like it's, okay. it's a big thing, I guess. A lot of people, a lot of our listeners are like really eating it up, and I'm like, damn, that sounds kind of cool. It sounds like a shitload of work, though. <laughs> um, and also like it's just sad that we don't really get to do that anymore. Um, as far as like playing the games together, it's, it hasn't been feasible for years, honestly. Except yeah. for on rare occasions. But it goes on. One of us needs to hit the jackpot. And then uh Yeah. Then we can do a little bit more. Well, one of us is in a state where the lottery's legal and the other's not, so uh, okay. So you're saying I should use the money I should be using for food and instead gamble with it. Yes. I yeah, mean okay. if you get the if you win, you'll never need money for food again. So there's that. Or uh, what if I go broke really quickly like all the other ones do? Then I guess you'll die and won't need food either. So in either way, <laughs> you won't need food money. So if I go broke, I die. Yes, That's you, the answer. Okay. Yeah, we, we live in a world where if you're poor, you're dead. Um, and so that that's exactly what will happen to you. <laughs> you know. I don't fucking know, man. It's just... It's it sucks because like there's so many fucking problems with this week. There's like the shit that happened to you. The reason why the quality's lower. Like this game is an asshole. And then of course I was coerced into into buying Dark Souls remastered by Cameron, and that's an asshole of a game too. Like oh man, I thought I was good. I thought I had got good when I played Bloodborne and I just beat it in like a week, and it was like not that big of a deal. And then I play this thing, and I'm like, no, I am not good at these games. This is bullshit. I am getting destroyed. And then I move over to Chocobo's Dungeon, start Chapter 3, and I'm like, not good at this game either. Um, apparently, I'm not good at anything anymore. <laughs> I'm just a trash heap of a gamer. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like nothing like getting getting slow casted on me in this Chocobo, this kid's Chocobo game, and then... You know, suddenly four guys are around me, and they get to hit me three times each, and then I can maybe chug a potion, and then they just kill me. They just kill me the next time. It's... Sounds like a nightmare. It sounds like a gang rape uh, followed by like being drugged, and killed. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a beast. You just describe audio. <laughs> it's a bestiality gang rape of a fucking poor little yeah. chicken like bird in this game. Oh, you got is your little saddle to protect you. Yeah, and it's like, this isn't even armor. It's a fucking saddle. <laughs> it doesn't protect your asshole. So, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about saddles. Uh, you're just begging to be ridden. So. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. Yeah, if there's one thing I know about saddles, it's that you're begging to be ridden. Yeah. That's one thing I do know in this crazy, crazy world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh man! Okay. I hate, like, dude. I hate this game. I hate it. I hate that. I hate turning on the television to play video games right now. Yeah, like I, that feeling actually like fills me with dread. I'm like, fuck. Why? I don't hate it, but I'm just very angry with it. I'm like, it's just really hard, and I. It doesn't seem like there's really any way to get it easier. As far as I can tell, I mean, like the the you could just redo the dungeons over and over again, but you're at a point where you can't even really do that because they start damaging your equipment. They start they start downgrading your equipment. 
and you're losing stats from your equipment pieces and it's like, well, I had experience from the dungeon, but I'm not going to I'm not going to lose those stats, so I'm going to reset the reset the game because this is bullshit. Then you go back in, you try to get experience, same thing happens. I've stopped resetting because of the experience. Um but I was doing a lot of that up until today, basically. It's like just just play it again. Just keep going. Because if you get to the tenth floor and you have all that shit, you can escape. Yeah. And set shit, and then like get your armor and stuff back up. So oh, just... okay. So tenth floor is a, a full. You can leave and you won't lose all your stuff. Yeah, it's like floor eleven usually. It's ten or eleven. Okay, that's not. Uh, you get up there, it'll say you reach a checkpoint, and then when you do that, that's your cue to like find the whole. I guess the uh, yeah the one yeah. way you could go about it is to floors is a lot. It needs to be five. Well, yeah, especially because like the game wants you to explore. You know, the game wants you to go look around and find new armor, find upgrades, find items. You, you what? It's not. It it only wants you to explore so that it can punish you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. It's not to make it easier. It's to make it more likely for you to get surrounded by enemies and destroyed. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to even talk about this game anymore. <laughs> I'm talking about it. I want to move on to hope. All right. Character. All right. Let's talk Fantasy about 13. Final Fantasy Thirteen Episode Zero. Uh, hope. <laughs> I don't even know what the episodes are called. By the way, you, you got to match my fucking descriptors in the last two, the format. So have fun with that. Um, okay. So this first chapter, excuse me, this fifth chapter in this uh, Final Fantasy Thirteen Episode Zero thing. Uh, this is all about hope, um, and much like hope in the original game, pretty much nothing happens. No one cares. Yeah, and we're talking yeah. Hope, capital H, not Hope, lowercase h. Um, yeah, yeah, let's be clear here. That's true. But this is before fifteen two. so... <laughs> the person, not the idea. Yeah. <laughs> the person named Hope. Um, <laughs> got some notes here. So this is what we learned from this chapter, okay? Daddy cannot come... On vacation. Of course, we know Hope has daddy issues. We saw it in Final Fantasy XV. Oh, yeah. And this is just like filling in the gaps there. Uh, daddy can't come on vacation even though they planned it a year and a half in advance or some shit like that. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's really – okay, all right. Because um, daddy always has to work. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I write down here, Hope washed vegetables and hates father. Yeah. Uh, also, the first one of the first things this chapter says is like, all bad phone calls start at night or come at night. It's like every nighttime phone call is a bad phone call, and I'm like, that, that seems like a really weird, weird little thing to live by. Um, yeah, he's got serious daddy issues. He's not a fan of his dad at all. And the weird thing here, it's like it's strange that his mom brought bought vegetables and that the vegetables themselves are strange. There's like a lot of weird things surrounding farming. And I guess it makes sense because they have their Falci who's supposed to, who's supposed to like feed them and shit. Um, if you remember that from 13 cocoons is like, uh, I think it's carbuncle, right? And carbuncle like keeps them fed and shit. So like, I guess it is odd that she's buying food, but I'm like, you're on vacation. Like, I don't, I, I don't know. It just seems, it seems weird to make it seem weird if it's something that you can do. Like, I, I don't know. But yeah, daddy issues for sure. Um, and then daddy is vacation with his mom, uh, and they're in uh, Urade Gorge, and uh, apparently that place is a tourist place, uh, which had an accident recently. I guess, right? And so they can't go through it. They have to go on like an airship tour. Um, some like kids there. Yeah, there's like a. I think it's like a weird flashback here. So it's a flashback to try uh, to Hope's childhood, um, where it talks about his childhood friends, Kai. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah fucking. Her, I was taking notes too. 
his friends Kai and Alita, and it talks about how they were like good friends back in the day. And he's like has this weird flashback scene. He always takes a bunch of photographs, just like every other asshole in the world. Um, yeah, there's a they, they talk about here. It's kind of interesting. They talk about how the kids are like, "What does that smell?" You know, as they go down to into this area, and the the people they were with, they're like, "Well, that's what Earth smells like. That's like the ground," because they live you know, in cocoon and they don't really have much in the way of farming and shit like that. So like, they don't know the smell of or earth and like tilled ground and stuff like that. So they, they were kind of confused by it. Um, and then we also get to see some things from 13 two here with the, uh, the weather control devices in this chapter where like, the guys uh, during their tour, the, the like people doing the tour were talking about how like certain monsters show up during certain weather patterns, which we know from Final Fantasy thirteen two, because um, there are numerous parts in that story where you on the planes you have to change the weather to get certain things done, right? So yeah. they have, I guess they try to make us more comfortable with this bullshit device that changes the weather, um, but whatever, and they sort of change it around and the researchers use these devices to study monsters and find out like okay do they like the sun do they like the rain do they do this that whatever and they yeah the the kids kind of just like sneak off and are getting into trouble and like changing the weather around get attacked by attacked by monsters and shit and then they also talk about how the uh this was really weird to me the foul sea like talks to the sanctum and they'll tell the sanctum like what the weather is going to be. They're like, Oh yeah, we're going to have a really big storm here in like, you know, a couple of weeks and shit. And like the odd thing to me is they pointed out in the chapter, Oh yeah, we have weathermen and shit, but like the foul sea is always right. And the weather guys aren't. And I'm like, weathermen. yeah, I'm like, why do you have a channel four weather? If you got foul sea weather, like w- what the fuck is the point to that? Like there was no, not accurate one is yeah yeah it's like there was no need for this other weather these other weather people and like what the what the fuck is that even a thing but whatever uh, a bunch of weird shit they uh it cuts back to mother and hope and his mom and you know it's kind of like a dud of a day cuz there are a ton of soldiers nearby because of the recent events with sarah and the falci waking up I'm pretty sure that was in this area, and that's why there's, like, a big deal going on, which is also why Hope's dad was called into work, was because of this problem that uh, that took place. They, like, big... I think it was, like, the explosion or something in 13 that happens. Because um, right now it's, like, catching up to FF13 in a lot of ways. But, yeah, they uh, get out of Uriday, and he wants to meet back up with his friends, and that's really it. Uh... I, there's like a flan dragon chase. I wrote. Oh yeah, he gets chased by one of the monsters. Yeah, the uh, flan dragon. Survival time, and then he like talks about how they're lost while they're getting like chased by these things. Uh, and then I wrote, it's impossible to get lost in FF13 because there's only one road. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> uh, yeah we talk about rain monsters, and then hope. After presumably being um, saved by the Falci, Hope broods about Dad more. That's the last I have of the... He made sure to bring it back to his dad. Of course, yeah. It's got to go full circle, right? Yeah. It's all about... Hope his dad has some problems on his vacay. And he's mad at his dad some more. Yeah, and that was the longest of these three chapters, by the way. Um, yeah. by like a substantial amount. It's just hope being whiny and reminiscing about the days of old with his pals. Um, we do get a little bit of backstory into like the, oh, we also get the line moms are tough again. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Like as if we needed that again. Cause like, she's like, moms are tough. And then she dies like a, she dies like a bitch. And like the next scene, you know, in the game, it's like. Well, you know, someone told me moms were tough one time, but then they got blasted. <laughs> I was like, terrible. I don't think they're all that tough. I mean, if I'm going to judge the one that told me as the model for this quote, uh, gotta say, not feeling it. 
<laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. The mobs are tough. Oh, man. Uh, fuck, dude. All right. Uh, the, next <laughs> the next chapter is, of course, the backstory that we all needed to know as to why Snow got her, him and Sarah matching necklaces. On phase 13. Uh, so they go out. They're getting a present for lightning. And then uh, Snow is like asking people around about Lassie stuff. Sarah turned into a Lassie. It's all like these three things. Because Lightning's getting a birthday present. She wants an engagement ring type thing, but rings are too weak for his big ass fat hands, I guess. And then <laughs> and at the same time, Sarah just turned into a Lassie, so he's trying to like find the information, like find more information on that. He's having no luck with the Lassie information. They're not really having any luck looking for the lightning stuff. They're like, oh, should we get her a good luck charm? Should we get her a fucking plush toy? A Leviathan toy was one of the things. I was like, what? Yeah, okay. I'm like, is that an adult toy or is that like a, you know, a plushie? It's like, oh, let's give her let's give her the Leviathan. You know, the, 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 the nine-inch <laughs> Leviathan, like. <laughs> S- squirts, you know, at ecstasy or some shit. I don't know. Fucking cool. cast cast his whirlpool move on you near the cool. end. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> and then Snow, while they're doing this, starts secretly looking for something for him. Sarah, yeah, Sarah doesn't know about this. Um, so Snow's like, "Hey, I gotta go to the bathroom. Move on ahead." But really, he stays in the store, and then um. Then he's that he tries to get, uh, yeah, he tries to get the necklace in the window. I do have a note here that Snow too is annoyed by people with lap dogs. Um, so I get that about his character. I can really relate. Um, I don't know about you, Schweiss, uh, but people and their fucking dogs in Southern California is driving me fucking nuts. Just it's like, driving me nuts, man. Just people They're, with little dogs everywhere little big it doesn't fucking matter man they bring them everywhere and it's like they bark all the time and they like have accidents and the store that i work at and shit and it's like can we please can someone please sue the fuck out of a store for letting a dog in so that then the store all stores will stop letting dogs in yeah, suddenly Please. dogs will be known to cause cancer, and like it'll be great, you know. So sick of people like seeing like leave your fucking dog at home. Leave your fucking dog at home. God damn it. Yeah, if it's not Fuck. like a, if it's not like a, a if it's not an actual like seeing eye dog trained by a professional, then no. Yeah, or you like it not take anywhere outside of like. A fucking like dog park or on a walk uh, in the on the sidewalk. Don't bring it into the fucking grocery store. Yeah, he says a fucking god damn it. All right, <laughs> yeah. so that's how Snow feels as well, which I really appreciate. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um. So Sarah, yeah, he wants the necklace in the window, which reminded me of something I can't really think of it right now. Was it the um, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> In the window. Thank you. Thank <laughs> the you. one with the sparkly jewels. <laughs> yeah. uh, Snow then realizes that the person who works there is an f- old friend, and they happen to tell him. Apparently, Snow doesn't have a job. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And uh, that was. It was interesting to me to learn about FF13 socialist world. Yeah, and, no, and, uh, yeah. And Snow is perfectly able-bodied. Uh, <laughs> and he does not have a job. And the person there was like, you don't have a job? And that was a good moment. And then uh, Snow apparently buys her a survival knife. So Not much happens in that chapter. He just kind of gets the... He figures out what, what he wants to get Sarah... Yeah, yeah, um, pretty much. Uh, we learn about Cocoon's socialist education system here, where apparently Sanctum will pay for everyone's education as long as they're able-bodied and not a criminal. So, like, if you're on the up-and-up, 
you can go to school and they'll support you. And it kind of reminded me of sort of the early, uh, early America's mob days, you know, where like Italian immigrants would come over and they'd have nothing. They'd have no one, just their families that they brought with them in this strange land. And everyone was racist, just like everyone's racist now. They all fucking hated the Italians in the beginning. So they would like banish them and like cast them out of society. And then you'd have these organizations of people that would pick them up and say, Hey, you know what? We can help you. We're going to provide you with room and board. We're going to make sure you're fed. All we need is for you to vote like we want you to vote. And uh, that's exactly what the mob did. And that's kind of what it seems like Sanctum does. And there's even a part in this chapter where Snow acknowledges that, yeah, they'll pay for everything. And like, I take what I need, but I don't take any more than what I absolutely need. So Snow is like kind of ashamed of his his welfare assed uh, yeah. ways in this world, and it's it's kind of interesting because you don't we don't really get any of that from Final Fantasy thirteen. Like we don't really know the social and economical climate of with the DBT card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snow's walking up with his food stamp card you got the you got the old Clint Eastwood guy behind him it's like oh can't have a job boy so like you're working working off of my back I gotta work my back off and you big ass motherfucker in here use that card you know it's like your hand your your fingers are bigger than my fucking legs and you're in here you're in here using the system like get a job somewhere my god you're huge you're obscenely large as a human being. You're a massive man. Like, what are you doing? Uh, but yeah, he's. I guess he just gets, you know, goes to school for free and has a free Gold's Gym membership too. And that's why he's <laughs> the biggest person in the world. Because, <laughs> like, thinking back on thirteen, there's like a couple big dudes on Cocoon, like. Well, yes. There's like a few a few beefcake guys in Nora, right? But like. No one is as big as Snow. Like, there's no one. He's like the one guy that has giantism in this world. Like, he's just fucking huge. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. And it's like everybody else. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger got stranded in China, and like that's that's it. There's like a couple Yao Ming's here and there, but everyone else is just tiny, just small little people, and then this big ass dude, just in a sea of midgets. It's coming all the time. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so fuck. Yeah, not much really goes on in that chapter though. Um the I guess the thing I like about these little these little books is kind of just the little details that we don't really get. I mean that was similar with some of the uh some of the Final Fantasy Seven stuff as well. But I, I kinda like these a little bit more because these I don't are know. better. I think they're better written. Um it's not that necessarily they're better, uh, like with the and reading. also their function within like us getting more information about the world and shit. It's also better. Yeah, uh, and they are more true unto themselves. They aren't retconning shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that the more complicated plot <laughs> and world of Final Fantasy Thirteen is somehow in their ancillary products <laughs> somehow get their little a little better. I know, yeah, and it's it's funny at the end of part seven, which is titled "Tomorrow," um, Scott Spot even kind of calls that out. He's like, "Yeah, you know, like there's a lot of good stuff in here that you know would have been super useful for the game." I mean, I guess they just didn't want to put it in a big old cutscene. But I was thinking, like, why the fuck not? They put everything else in a big old cutscene. It's like, why not just give them the goods? Every emotional moment with a bling, ding, 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 playing. They had to put it all in there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, of- it's like, you could have just done one more. Like, fuck it, why not? And maybe the game would have been less confusing. I don't know, with the data logs and, like, all of that. It's just... I feel like there's still opportunity for gameplay stuff. Obviously, like, someone must have told them, you gotta be thrown into the action, man. Yeah. And it's like, for certain stories, yeah. For this, no. No, let's warm up. You know, let's fight some rats in the sewer, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let's do the FF12 warm up, you know. Yeah. You just you give us a big cut scene and then you don't worry about it for a while. And you like warm us up to the game instead of just like, "Whoa, bam, here it is." And then you just slog us down with the in between the awesome fighting with these long ass cut scenes. It's 
Yeah. Uh, but we have one more part to talk about before we finish up Final yeah. Fantasy 13 episodes. Yeah. It's written in a different way at the beginning where it's like almost like a legend, almost. The legend of what we figure out pretty quickly is Fang and Vanille, like going through like multiple chambers of trials or something um, in order to become a lessee. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very different. And it's like about them being accepted to be a lessee. And they accept all these like responsibilities in each chamber until finally Fang decides to insult the Falci Anima, which is the Falci that they're going up to uh, present themselves to, I guess. And I'm not really sure why she does it. So she she freaks out um, because they find out that because the priests are talking about orphans and stuff, and they were orphans too. And they basically use orphans as fodder. They turn them into seeth to serve the Falci. Um, and so they Fang finds that out, and she gets super pissed off about it. And is like, you know what? I'm going to fucking kill these people. And she starts, they like beat the shit out of some of the priests in this area. And those guys kind of freak out, and they sentence her to death. And this is when Vanille kind of comes to the rescue and is like, hey, you know, why don't you just let us become... Let's see to fight Cocoon rather than kill us because like everyone hates Cocoon like Cocoon hates Pulse Pulse hates Cocoon really they just don't know anything about each other and there's like a weird Final Fantasy X esque um, sort of like religious state going on in both areas where they're just pitted against these this other world that they know nothing about and all that they, they know is fed to them uh, is spoon fed to them basically I um, mean it kind of makes sense because I mean the Falci. Um, they're not really buddy buddy with each other necessarily, and they're just gods, and they have like their servants, so they kind of like they want to be uh, omnipresent, omnipotent gods, and basically the other gods are just shit in their eyes, as far as I can tell in this world. So there's a lot of stuff like that, but yeah, instead of dying here, Vanille asks Anima to turn them into Lassi to fight Cocoon, um, and that's what they do. They 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 let him. Come, let's see. Yep, and then uh, Vanille has a moment where she's like, oh, I promised to Fang from that day on we would never be apart. Um, and, of course, they got separated. Yeah. Uh, the chapter. Uh, and then um, and then Vanille is basically, she's, she's being purged with the others. Somehow, like, ran into that. And... Um, so she's going to go back down to uh, to Pulse. And then it's continued in, in Final Fantasy thirteen. Yeah, um, yeah. We see Vanille in, if you remember, this is where it kind of goes into thirteen, like right away. Because we see um, at the very end, Vanille, there's a lot of talk about like people freaking out that they're going to Pulse. And like Pulse has been built up as this uninhabitable world for humans. But Vanille, I mean, Vanille and Fang came from Pulse. So they know that's not true. You just need to be... You just need to work together a little more on Pulse to survive. And so she's like, there's a whole a whole little bit about that, about how these people are weak in Cocoon and, like, they can band together and they'll be just fine down there. But none of them know it. And, uh, and yeah, they're just kind of, everyone's kind of disheartened. She runs into Saz, Hope, and his mom. And then they all get loaded up on that train to be purged to Pulse. Yeah, so that's pretty much where this, uh, where this story ends, right where FF13 picks up. For at least the first bit, yes. and then it, of course, cuts around to the 13 days. I would almost... I mean, I don't know how the experience would be as a new reader, but I wonder if the Final Fantasy thirteen game would be improved by reading this thing first. <laughs> I think it would, honestly. I think it's a pretty well-put-together set of stories. Um, it only took... I mean, it was it was like a seven hour, seven or eight hour uh, excursion. So it's a work day to listen to it all. But I think it does a pretty damn good job of world building. Um, it set up the it set the stage for what Final Fantasy thirteen is. It gave us a little bit of tidbits, which aren't necessarily super important, but it's just interesting to think about when you go into the world, when you go into the game, um, as far as like their their economy, the way they operate, like the the education system, like how they kind of explain, yeah, Snow is kind of a beach bum. He's exactly what he looks like, you know? He just kind of hangs out and 
uh, lifts weights for 13 hours a day, and, uh, you know, that's how life is. Uh, I think it does a great job of setting up the events of 13 with the uh, with the whole fight with the Falsy, because, I mean, we run into... Um, we run into Sarah going to confront the their Falsy in Cocoon. And I think, I can't remember exactly what gets everybody in the party together for that, but they all are, like, there. And then the Falsy is pissed and, like, attacks everybody, and then everybody falls down, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Into Lake Brescia, or as we first experienced it, um, whatever the fuck the underground lake was in Final Fantasy X, doing the same exact scene, pretty much. But it's... Uh, it, it's a great way to kind of bring these characters a little bit of backstory because it sort of just chucks them in there at the beginning of 13. And I honestly, when I, when we listened to the final fantasy seven stuff, I didn't want to replay seven necessarily after I'd listened to it. Um, it was, I mean, I wanted to replay it about as much as I usually do, which is like a, uh, I kind of wish I had time to plank around in seven. But now that I've listened to this, I'm like, man, I kind of want to play 13s whole trilogy again like right now I had now. the exact same thought up to the point where I checked the PlayStation store to see if 13 was in there and it wasn't I was like <sighs> So I know it's on Steam so I can get it that way someday Yeah I mean you uh, could have you could have played it but you know Yeah I mean do I still have the games or did someone get them out of the grab bag No no one's grabbed them they're still here no if you can get the PS3 I mean I have my PS3 still. Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. And it works on PS3 games, right? They're fine? Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't work on PS2. I just assumed that they would have updated, which is honestly like why I... I mean, that's the reason I don't have 10 anymore, is because next time I want to play 10, I'll just buy it for the PS4. Yeah, exactly. There's no reason not to get the higher def version of it. And the PS4 right. is like... God, it is so much faster and easier to use than the PS3, like... Going back is so fucking painful. I'm like, oh, God. I pressed the middle button on accident. How how good the PS3 system was, though. Yeah. It's like, like, what is it? Uh, Plato's Allegory of the Cave or whatever. It's like, (laughs) once you see, like, the next step up, you can't go back. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, oh, God. I pressed that middle button, like, five seconds ago, and now it's finally updated. And I can look at the fucking menu. PS4, it's just like lightning speed, you know. Yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful machine. It is, yeah. I'll have to get those sent out to you. I think I'll I'll send you. Uh, it's not really a care package because it's your shit, but uh, you know, I'll I'll send you some of your stuff so you can. I need Diablo three now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. All I wanted to do was like play some multiplayer game. And I'm like, I really just want to play Diablo three. That's all I want to do. Yeah, I kind of um, wish I. Shit, I wish we had the Lego Jurassic World. That's a pretty goddamn fun game. That's multiplayer. I've been playing that with Jace, though. I mean, it'd be kind of a betrayal. But, uh, yeah, I think Diablo 3 is... It's probably about time to replay that thing. It's been a few yeah. years. So. I, wish they'd re- I wish they'd put out Diablo 1 and 2 up on there. I know, that'd be sweet be so good too would be so fucking awesome on ps4 dude even if it looked like shit like i'd love to play that again just to be so much easier to get a party i agree i agree with all the above uh okay um yeah i recommend these stories in fact here's here's my order um you're playing i've got two options for you when you start ff13 every time you hit a new character read their chapter And then you continue on with their story um, on a replay. Or wait until you get to Grand Pulse in FF13. And when you're, like, starving for story content in that part, you know, give these a read. Uh, those are my ideas, you know. It's kind of like that uh, the Star Wars order where you start with the good ones. Or you start with, what is it, New Hope... It's New Hope Empire, and then you do the prequels, and then you end with Return of the Jedi, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's my idea. Get to Grand Pulse, read Final Fantasy Thirteen Episode Zero, the novella, and then uh, and then continue on with the game. There you go. There you go. I think that's how we um, should totally do it. 
um, kind of like the same thing with the 15 order that we have. Um, we've got our good friend of the show, guy who does our artwork, Stolas. He has this like master list that he created a text file for that's like everything FF15 and like the order in which you should play it as far as like beginning to end for like the full story. Um, that would be, yeah, yeah, chronologically uh, speaking at least. And I, I think this would be, That'd be a good option just to just to get a little bit more into these characters. I mean, not a ton happens, like we said, but it never was. It never really got annoying or anything, um, and it was all it was all good. I, I I wish they would have found a way to put it into the game instead of in this uh, you know, like you said, ancillary product of the game. It seems yeah. almost like a betrayal. So, so the next thing we got to do in the thirteen universe. We still got some stuff in the 10 universe to wrap up, and we got to do FF Unlimited. But in the 13 universe, we got to do episode one, Final Fantasy 13 2 or 13 episode one, which is like just, it's like a six part thing, but it's it's as long as one of these chapters. It's not a full book. It was just something released online. Um, but yeah, it's about an hour long on the audio format. Yeah, yeah, that'll be. So, if if we don't beat the Chocobo game, that'll probably be what we want to do next time. <laughs> and then gonna... we got 13-2. It's odd to be get, get into all this 13 content all of a sudden. Uh, FF-13-2 before, FF-13-2 after, and then, of course, the uh, reminiscence of of whatever the fuck. <laughs> don't have it in front of me right now. but um, Yeah, man. Do that. FF-10-2. Bro, we're wrapping this stuff up. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, I got one qu- good question from uh, from our listeners here. There are more good questions, but I, I picked one out. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> and, uh, if you could please uh, hashtag UFFQ, or if you could put your questions on the forums at ultimatefinalfantasy.com, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, it gives us some good interaction with you guys, and, and we love that. Also, if you have any FF stories please send those to fffanatics123 at gmail.com uh so this question unless you want to do the jingle twice is the jingle working yeah yeah you know what let's let's get to the question What is this? What is this epic question you have found for us? This one's from Aldwin Ryder. Uh, they say, "Do you think Tabata leaving is a bad sign for Square? Do you think the health of the company is in decline or on the rise?" Okay. Um, do we think? Do I think it's a bad sign for Square? Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if necessarily Tabata leaving is a bad sign for Square. I think there's a lot of things that point to it not being necessarily a great time over at Square Enix. And I I think a lot of it is we're seeing a bunch of stuff, a bunch of promises they made for FF15, a bunch of planned DLCs that they canceled. Um, And they've touted 15's numbers basically the whole time. And they've done a great job of selling Final Fantasy 15. But I feel like it kind of shows that there are some internal issues going on when, you know, one of the biggest RPGs of the last few years suddenly has a bunch of its DLC canceled. And people were eating these DLCs up. Like, not everyone is as meh on DLC as we are. There there are a lot of people that were looking forward to this. A lot of people are feeling kind of betrayed. And I think Square Enix knew that was going to happen. Um, I think Tabata leaving is... Not, I don't know. I I feel like I could see that it was becoming problematic at least about a year ago because we started getting a lot of announcements of remasters of games that they had never re-released again. FF12 was one of the earlier ones, and then now suddenly we have 
We have the uh, Chocobo's Dungeon game, a super random niche, not well-selling game on the Wii. They're remastering that and re-releasing it on PS4. We've got um, we've got Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles being re-released on PS4. It seems like they're kind of pulling out a lot of their their older games and trying to pull on some nostalgic heartstrings to get a quick buck almost. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily going to be a bad game because I think they do pretty good ports as far as I can tell as of right now. But that doesn't mean I don't think it's just a quick cash grab to kind of get some extra revenue going in the company. And that doesn't really seem like something a super healthy company would do. Um, I think it's great that they're re-releasing some of their content. Certainly I, I, I think it's something that they should do because a lot of us don't have access to our, are we anymore or finding a good copy of the game. And even if we do find a copy of Chocobo Tales, Chocobo's Dungeon, it's used. Square Enix doesn't make a cent off of it. And we have to dredge up that old Wii. It's not a, you know, order it online for 30 bucks, play it on your PS4, ease of use. And we're lazy, so we're going to buy it again instead of fucking buying it or instead of dredging out the old Wii. Because that's how, that's how America works, man. We, we, we make it easier. You you spend money on ease. You don't you don't grow your own tobacco because it's easy. You buy it even though it's bullshit expensive because you can. You know, so it, it seems like there are a lot of things going on right now that make me think that it's not on the up rise. I think it's in a decline, if anything. Um, I don't necessarily think it's like not going super well. And I think Tabata might be a special case of. He might have just, you know, they might have just been kind of at an impasse where he wanted to do one thing, they wanted to do another. He said, I'm not going to direct another Final Fantasy game again. He said that basically right after 15 came out, he said, yeah, I don't want to work on another one of these games. So maybe they had approached him and, you know, wanted him to work on one of the games and they were just kind of at an impasse. And he said no, and they kind of parted ways after that. Because as far as we can tell, it was a peaceful uh, parting of ways. So, I mean, it's not like they fired his ass, which would mean like, oh, there's some bad shit going on right now at Square Enix if they just canned him, you know, kicked him out in the street. But it seemed like a very civil, a very, uh, you know, uh, good good decision for both parties as far as him leaving. So I do think that, they're in more of a decline. That's a situation. Yeah, it's not, it's not quite the same. Um, but I, I would say if I were to... Look at the company right now and whether decide whether or not I think they're in an upswing or a downswing. I think it's a downswing for sure. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think? Huh. Uh, this is complicated for me. I can't – I don't really pay attention to anything outside of Final Fantasy. So I can't really say the company as a whole, like how it's looking – uh, I can say, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3, people are excited for that, and I'm sure it's going to be a huge moneymaker, and it's going to do well. Um, hopefully it's as good, if not better, than the other two um, main series Kingdom Hearts games, um, which are beloved, and I love them a lot, personally. Uh, in which case, you know, that coupled with the remake of FF7 that's going to be coming out probably in the next year and a half, I'd say. Maybe two years. Um, those two things are going to keep the series alive while Square probably is attempting to regroup and not make FF16 as much of a disaster as FF15 was in terms of like how long it takes um, it might take as long to come out for us players, but the actual internal time taking the game, uh, hopefully, my assumption is that they don't want to repeat that again. They don't want to have one guy working on a game, like one team working on a game for forever and then have to switch uh, totally like the... So, I'm hoping that they're setting their sights out on 16. Part of me thinks that when we get to the next generation, like either FF 16 or FF 17 is going to be online again. Um, I hope it's not 16. I hope it's 17. Cause they're probably like every, like they're probably looking like every like 10 years to 
to do another online platform big right. game. Yeah, because that's such a big money maker for them. It really is. Yeah, they're big. So I do wonder, like, uh, who they're going to put in charge, whether or not it's going to be Nomura or Kitase or Ito, one of the guys that we know, or if it's going to be, like, a new golden boy who's going to make the next Final Fantasy game. But I don't I don't think they want to do the same thing that they did with 15. I bet 16 is going to be scaled back. I don't think they're going to have, like, a... With, te- with 15, it almost seemed like they were, like, trying to outdo themselves, but just because 14 was such a disaster when it initially came out. Uh, it's the only disaster in the whole series is 14, right? They all did well. <laughs> yeah, the only other disaster we could quote or cite, I guess, would be Spirits Within, which doesn't really yeah. count. Yeah. I'm talking about main series games. Yeah. But... I don't think, yeah, I think with 15, they were probably trying to outdo themselves. 15, the game was a success. Maybe not with the cost of the movie and not with the cost of the DLCs and keeping everybody going for 10 years. Maybe not. Um, my guess is that it still was. Uh, that maybe there's some money mismanagement going on. But whether or not Tabata leaving... Tabata, the, the, is, I think, is that Hironobu Sakaguchi, when he left in the middle of the FF development, it was in the middle of the development, so that's one. Uh, and then another thing was that, like, he was not on good terms with the company at that point. He had basically been, like, disregarded and, um, and thrown away, almost. And so, like, then it was his turn to go and do his thing, but it's not quite the same. Yeah, the, they're in very, uh, very different places at these times too. I mean, like they're not in a. I don't think they're in a horrible place like they were at uh, at that time. You know, it's it's not it's not nearly the same. Um, and scale. nothing says that those dips in profits. I don't like. I don't think that's puzzle like final fantasy 15 puzzle kind of thing it might be 15 fatigue but 15 itself i mean sold like what nine million copies by now so <laughs> come on um you gonna pretend that that's not a gigantic success in comparison to the rest of the series so i don't know I don't know what's really going on. I can only talk about the Final Fantasy series. I bet they're trying to regroup, and I, I don't think... I mean, they could play their cards wrong and have it be a big, huge fiasco all over again, but I don't think 16. I don't think their goal is to make 16. Uh, 15. No, and I think one of the things... I almost wonder if they did it, because remember, they, they told us they weren't going to do Final Fantasy VII's remake until they made a game that they felt was as good, if not better, than Final Fantasy VII. And so maybe they tried to build this mega hype train for Final Fantasy XV to make it seem like it was, to make it seem like they had truly outdone themselves. And the only problem with that is that half of the shit they did for XV is bad in, in like so many ways. I mean, they, they blew a ton of money on a piece of shit movie that's just it's just bad. Like I there are there are so many people that just revere Kingsclave and I'm like, dude, it's awful. Like it's just a terrible movie. So I, I that one's not a good decision. It was a bad financial decision because that movie didn't make money. No, it didn't. it didn't, yeah. It was a yeah. big flop. Um and Advent Children did make money. Advent Children made that money. So I think they wanted to make they wanted to outdo Final Fantasy VII in every conceivable way, and it just didn't quite work out. The game sold like a motherfucker. Like, 15 has sold a ton of copies, and it is undoubtedly a success. But uh, I feel like part of me wonders if maybe they did all of this, these grand things and all these grand ideas came out of the idea of, we want to do FF7's remake. We think it's time. We're going to make 15 outdo FF7. And then we can deliver on our promise to give them the remake. You know what else I think? I think that this. I think they're not announcing FF16 because of the FF7 remake. Yeah, which is 
kind of bullshit. Like that kind of makes me really mad. Scene for the FF7 remake, almost in place of you know. Um, and as a real fan of the series, not just a fan of seven. <laughs> Uh, the fact that we're not getting another main series probably for like another seven years, um, it's probably like six. Years. I'm gonna guess six years. How about that? Um, the fact that we're not gonna get it for so long, you're like, I know we're not gonna get it for a long time unless they do like pull a 14 again, where they're like, it's coming out in nine months, um, <laughs> and it's gonna be a huge disaster. Which they've done, they've done successfully though. They they did that with 13. Remember, they made the playable demo and then they made 90 percent of the game. And if we get yeah. another FF thirteen as sixteen, like, sure, That's it's true, lower on the t- lower on the Final Fantasy tier, but we would get something new at the very least. Um, and that, yeah. and they pumped out seven, or they pumped out like the first few, and then like seven and eight, like a year apart from each other. That's pretty damn impressive, you know. Like, I could live with that if it's not my favorite. If it's you know got a terrible, <laughs> terrible song theme song in it, but it's got some pretty good elements. Like, I'd be fine with that. I'd be fine getting a game that they put out quickly. They don't need to take forever on these things. I know it gets harder and harder and more expensive to make games on a grand scale like we do these days, but Square Enix and Crunch Time, they made 13 that way. They 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 made a demo, and then they were like, okay, now for real, let's make this game. And then they made it, and then they put it out, and it did well. And it's got its problems, but it's still pretty it's great. Well, it's a well-put-together game. It is, yeah. Think, yeah. There's problems with it, of course, from a storytelling perspective and gameplay, but it's not like it's not a buggy piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fourteen when it came out. It's not, you know, unplayable and people despised it. Um and it's not so out of the out of the zeitgeist that it's people look at it and they're like, uh, guys, you're making a game that you made 10 years ago with 11. Like, that's not MMOs anymore. 13 is, it feels different, but it also feels very unique and in a good way. It's not like they're going back to their roots and they're giving us something that's outdated as fuck with 13. So, like, I don't think it would go wrong in the same way as You have 14. to go back to 2009, but 13 felt state-of-the-art just as you're playing the game. It's like, wow, this is a piece of... This is a masterpiece of technology. <laughs> it's it is impressive. And like even going back to it for the show, I was like, this is a really good looking game, dude. I'm like, this is PS3, like this is top notch shit right now. Smooth and it looks beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so even even now, still look beautiful. Um Yeah, I mean so now I'm just thinking like what their strategy is for the future. I think they are gonna this is what they should be doing. They should just be, they should just have like a team at Square Enix because they have such a huge catalog, right? And one of the things that's going to keep money coming in is re releases of old games. It's just going to keep money coming in steadily. So every time they go to a new system, this team of like professional emulators <laughs> takes their old games, re releases them like once a month, we get a classic Square or Enix game just coming out into all the different systems. So over and over again. And it just goes on perpetually through the end of time. And then the A team should be making the next big thing that eventually becomes part of that library that keeps Square going. Right? So I think that's kind of what they're doing, but it feels so messy and clunky in the way that they're going about it. Why are we getting Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon? Why? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We should be getting uh, Final Fantasy XIII on the PS4. Yeah, we should be getting Final Fantasies on every new PS PlayStation. Why is Final Fantasy VIII not on the PlayStation Store? That'll exactly. make you a shitload of money. Exactly. I mean, even looking at like Adventures of Mana, it didn't have a ton of downloads, but it was like it was like a hundred thousand downloads or something on the store, and I'm like, that's a hundred thousand copies you sold, or ten thousand, or twenty thousand, or thirty thousand, and that port doesn't even fucking work, and that one sold. A lot, and they made a lot of money off of that. Can't imagine that was super expensive. So, yeah. And that would be a great way to go about it. As annoying as it is as a fan, sometimes you'd be like, ugh, they re-released it again. You know what I usually do to that? I'm like, oh. I mean, if I wanted to play the game again, I'd probably buy the PS4 edition. And just like with you in 13, like, you'd probably buy the PS4 edition. But And 
no one's going to, I don't think there's really room to complain about them porting a game that they made in the past. It just makes it that much more accessible for a new generation of people. Cause some, a lot of people get rid of their older consoles when they go to the new one. Um, I know plenty of, they need a, they need an eye towards the future. The future is most of their money off their library. That's how studios work. Movie studios work. And it's going to be the way the game studios work if they're not already there. Right. So, because they just have to keep on updating that library. That's why, like every movie, every old movie is on Blu-ray now. It's because they got they That's how they make most of their money. Frankly, it's like just a little bit at a time through old stuff that they've created throughout the years. So, right, Square and... is doing that. They're doing it in a weird way. They don't need to be working on remakes. They just need to do remastered for new systems and make sure they work, <laughs> and then put them out like. Make it an event for the bigger ones, yeah. But, you know, just keep putting them out steadily. We should, like, by the end of the PS4's run, we should have all the Square Co. games available. Like, in a perfect world. <laughs> like, every Square Co. game and every Enix game and every Square Enix game should be available on the newest system. Yes. But it's not. Yeah. So. It should. I mean, for God's sake, there's no reason not to. I've. I've bought every one of them that they put on PS4. Every single one of them so far, I own. And I, you know what? I played 9 for like an hour, and I tried to do the jump rope thing, and I was like, eh, I'm not going to play this game for a few years, probably. And I just put it away. Did I still spend 25 bucks on it? Oh, yeah. Did I buy 7's remake, or uh, remaster on PS4? Definitely bought it. I bought FF12 Zodiac Age. I bought I bought all of these goddamn games, because... I'm a fan of the series, and I'm a fan of getting it on a newer console. And like the touch-ups that they do, they get. I know most of it's done with an outside company, but I know they've made pretty good money off of these things, or they wouldn't be doing it. And I think that's a great way to float them. And I think you're right about the FF7 remake. I think that's going to be the thing that keeps us from FF16. And I hope, I just hope it works out for them so that we can get 16 before we die. You know, like I want to play Fed- I want to play another mainline FF game, and there aren't any more in front of us. We're done. It's over. We got fourteen expansions, sure, but that's it. That like gets we're at a, we're at a we're at an impasse with the with the mainline series here. We're playing stuff that's decades old at this point, and you know, not that it's bad, not that it's good. It's just I want to see. The, one of the one of the favorite things, one of my favorite things about the show is the evolution of the series, and we don't. We're not getting that anymore. We're getting more FF15 stuff and an FF7 remake and not even a mention of the next main mainline game. I just feel like it'd be ridiculous, like knowing the track record, knowing how fast these games came out in the past. If we didn't get like an announcement E3, at least like a teaser with like a logo, <laughs> like you're going to be pretty sad. Uh, every E3, I've been disappointed now since 15 came out. Every E3, I've been like, can we get a 16 <laughs> announcement? So, I mean, come on. I love these games. <laughs> uh, much much to people's uh, astonishment, maybe, listening to the show at this time, because we've been playing a lot of shitty ones. I do love these games, <laughs> and I'm excited to see what they do in the future. Remember, these games are always like the pinnacle of the JRPG at the time that they come out. I want to get to the next one, man. I want to see like what they learn from fifteen and what they move on with, what they what they what they bring forward, and what other stories they have to tell. So, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Get excited about it. Anyway, I think that should be about it for a show. You want to give us the plugs? Yeah. Um, if you guys like the show, make sure to subscribe to us. Um, we got a YouTube channel that's been dead for a long ass time, but one of these days I'll. We'll take some time to update that. It's youtube.com forward slash Ultima Final Fantasy. You can find some great Let's Plays from back in the day, some great live episodes, a lot of good stuff there. You can tweet me at UFF Podcast. And tweet me at Joseph DeGolier. You can follow our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Go to our website, ultimafinalfantasy.com, where you can see the episodes. You can support us through a PayPal link there directly. You can support us through Patreon through there. You can also support us by clicking through our Amazon link, buying all your goodies on Amazon like you already do, and we get a sweet little kickback percentage every time you do that. It doesn't cost you a damn thing. And uh, most importantly, just keep listening. Keep getting uh, 
keep giving us your iTunes reviews if you haven't already. And when we have a game, when we're playing a game that you've played, give us your reviews on it. We're playing through Final Fantasy Fables, Chocobo Tales, or Chocobo Dungeon, Chocobo's Dungeon, <laughs> and we want to know if you've played it. Chocobo's Let us... Pet Dungeon is what I've called it. Yeah, nice. Chocobo's uh... German Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, uh, let us know what you thought of it. Give us your questions. Give us your reviews. It's all great. I, I love to see dissenting opinions uh, on these games. Um, it's great. It kind of reins me in. Um, at times, and it's just it's just good to have a second uh, a second look on some of these because we have tons of reviews on iTunes where it's like, I love the show, I disagree with everything they say, but I love the show, and those are my favorite. <laughs> like, Dis- disagree on the show itself, though, by leaving your own reviews. Exactly, please. I mean, we can't go back to the main series, but <laughs> yeah, it's too late for that, and for a very long time. <laughs> Yeah, get to the city of oh, shit. Um, all right, man. It's been good talking to you. Yeah. And uh, it's been good hanging out with you guys. And until next time, as always, enjoy the grind.